childhood, when first I was a little child, I used to, I didn't have makeups, but I used to actually coloring pens to paint my eyebrows and my lipsticks. And then that day, my older sibling came in and saw me with that. And the first reaction he did, he actually slapped me in the face. Why should I live? They don't, they don't get it. I should die. It's better, it's easier. It doesn't take a lot of energy. It doesn't take a lot of struggles, you know? It doesn't take like explaining myself for millions of times. So I was like, that's the only way out. Like, sometimes you get exhausted and you have to choose an easy way because you're exhausted, you don't have any more energy left. All of them, they talk in front of you, like since when you were a child that to be with another man, as a man, it's really bad. And, and they will really be judgmental. They may kill you. They may do a lot of bad stuff physically to you. They'll punish you, get, report you to the court, to the police. So you will be traumatized just from the idea that I should act like, yeah, I'm into girls, not into boys. Because I just wanted to protect myself. Here in Iraq and Kurdistan, being gay can get you killed. And that's not the only threat. Through the sexual assaults, the fact that it's almost impossible to get and keep a job. And every day, living a life that means you can never be who you really are. This is what that feels like. I remember last time when we had a an event and I was dressing um, and then after the event I actually didn't go by the dress but I kept the wigs on. I was horrified myself. It was like 1 a.m. I was driving in my own car. I had also my friends with me but I was still very concerned that somebody would recognize me. A security at the gate that they would recognize me and they will say okay we know this car but we do not recognize this person. So it was a horrible feeling. It was, uh, I couldn't feel safe at all uh, to be outside. But I tried it just, just out of, um, I think, challenge of wanting to go. And I always had this uh, hope that I could, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I've been able to do it uh, in this safe space that I created for myself. Uh, but outside there, I cannot even imagine like, how horrible it could be. This is the only place that Queen can really be herself without fear of violence, inside her own home. She carefully gathers her closest friends and the tools she needs to transform herself physically into the woman she is within. These are the small secret spaces where Kurdistan and Iraq's LGBTQ community can express themselves. Doing it in the outside world is too dangerous, but there are always risks. You have, have worked really hard to create a safe space for people, haven't you? It requires a lot of thought, it requires a lot of process. I really have to make sure and, and check who is coming in that party or in that event. Uh, do I know them enough? If I don't know them enough, does one of the people that I'm inviting know them well enough? And then only I can, because it's also a responsibility. It's not just a safe space that I invite people to. No, it's a safe space for me, but I want it safe space for others. The responsibility is a lot. The risk is a lot, um, because I still live in this country. I am not far away from uh, my family. My family are not okay with anything it has to do with with my gender expression, or my gender identity, or my sexuality. And in, in their eyes, in their mind, they still think that they have this grown-up man who is working and independent. That's all they know. They really do not know and have information about my personal life. And I don't think they need to know, because I think they're not ready. But still, that doesn't mean that, that I will stop living my true self. Because like I said, I lived long enough as 
my society wanted me to, but not as I wanted to. So I'm ready to take those risks, and I'm happy to, when I can, when it's not compromising of my own safety, when it's done smartly in spaces that I can guarantee my own safety and my people's safety. It isn't illegal to be trans here, like Queen. It isn't illegal to be gay either. Having a relationship with another man or woman doesn't break any laws. But the social stigma is huge. If you ask why, you'll get different answers. Community, tradition, religion, but intolerance is everywhere. An LGBTQ support group created these street paintings to promote harmony. Within weeks, thick black paint was thrown across the rainbows and the women's faces. They've been left like that as a daily reminder that change is still far away. Queen isn't the only one who's suffering here. There are thousands just like her, living their lives in fear. Each day brings a new battle, and sometimes it's over the simplest things. Vereen is 22 and non-binary. They just quit their job as a lifeguard because of the harassment from customers. Some of the men asked crude personal questions about Vereen's sexuality. Some women said they felt threatened. It's a common problem for the LGBTQ community here. They often get turned down for jobs, and if they do get one, then bullying at work can be a huge problem. So, like, people here, they don't understand those things. They do not even know it exists. They're like, you're either woman or, like, man. And you're straight both ways. Uh, and they, because they don't understand it, the, the reason they don't understand it is because of the education. Once they're off duty, in a private, safe place, Vereen can dress how they want to and finally be themselves. Like many LGBTQ people here, they dream of leaving and going to live in a more tolerant country where they can be free. But it's not as simple as that. There are challenges that make it almost impossible. You'll be able to stay here because you're, you're young yeah. and already you have so many problems. Yeah. Do you ever think of leaving? Iraq is like a red zone and we don't have visas to anywhere, you have to buy it, and you know it's really expensive. It takes like $20,000 or something, and it's really too much for some people like me. So like, I, and I really, really want to study, like I'm a normal person, I'm, even though I'm non-binary, I'm a normal person. It affects everything, literally, even your mental health, the most, important thing in your life and you think like you're the wrong guy you're the bad guy you're the one that was born like that but then you they made you make you think that you chose that they make you think you chose that and it's really bad and it has like a really bad effect on your mental health maybe some of them get schizophrenic some of them get bipolar some of them get bpd only because of families and stuff saying you chose that and i didn't we didn't I have a really bad depression because of that. It's really, really bad. And when we talk about about dangers, how severe can that be? Uh, the, the level is like, you get killed. That's it. You get killed. Most people got killed because of their genders and sexualities and their acts, their styles, everything. Even though, like, maybe there's like a, gay men, they would like be, why are you feminine or you know those stuff, and they would like kill him because of being feminine, they don't even know he's gay, like they don't even get to that conclusion, and they kill him, they're like you're ashamed to the family, you're ashamed, you're, you shouldn't exist, you know those stuff. Killings are a very real threat for the LGBTQ community here. Whenever a new one appears in the news, people swap details and panicked messages online, fearing once again for their own safety. Not long after we met Vareen, there was a new report. Police in another part of Kurdistan announced the murder of a transgender woman in a village near Dahok. They said a family member had told them that the killer was the victim's brother. It's just another example of the dangers that LGBTQ people told us they navigate every day, not just from society, but often from their own relatives. 
Adam lives in Erbil now after fleeing the conflict in Syria, but he also had another reason for leaving. Someone he thought was a friend told the authorities that Adam was gay. At risk of prison, he had to use every connection he had to cross the border and escape. Now he faces the struggle of being a refugee, as well as discrimination over his sexuality. There's always the fear he'll be deported, and so far his efforts to move to a safer country have all been rejected. One of Adam's few safe spaces is here. This is one of the biggest parks in Erbil, and as you can see, it is late and it's cold. But when everything you do every day, every move you make, every moment that you spend outside is scrutinised and might put you in danger, then places like this are the only opportunity you might get for just a sliver of a normal life. So tell me about this park. How important is this place to you? Well, <laughs> uh, this park is one of the most like incredible things in the city. It's like a savior for me and my friends, like for all the <laughs> the people like who need like space or a place like to be alone. What's different about how can you act differently when you're here? I don't, I don't know, but like there is a lot of green and like blank space. Let me say, and you feel like sometimes. It's really cozy and like you, you. It's like freedom for you to be alone in this big park. Can you be physical here? Yeah. In a way that you couldn't somewhere else. Yeah, a bit because like not that much of people. Like it's not that crowded. It's quite empty sometimes during the day, for example. And uh, like when you're out of the park, you feel like you're out of. Like so you are somewhere and you, when you will come to this park, you feel like you're in different, totally different place. Yeah. Back at home, things are different. Like so many other gay men here, Adam lives quietly and carefully, so he doesn't draw attention to himself. There's definitely a feeling that people living outside Kurdistan and Iraq simply don't realize how tough things are for this LGBTQ community. If they did, it would be easier to leave, to move on, and live in a more tolerant society. It means each day becomes about survival, about fitting in and keeping safe. But inside, there are always dreams about how a better future could look, the kind of life that's already possible in other parts of the world. Can you see things changing here anytime soon? Not at all, not at what happened in Baghdad to Two weeks ago, they killed thirteen years old boy just because they thought that he's gay. I don't think so. No. Middle East? Oh my God, no way. Which made you more frightened for your life, the war or being gay? Being gay. Really? Mm. Well, to. To born and like, and be in a society and like, a really big community in Syria, and all of them they talk in front of you like since when you were a child that to be with a, another man as a man it's really bad and and they will really be judgmental they may kill you they may do a lot of bad stuff physically to you they'll punish you get, report you to the court to the police. So you will be traumatized just from the idea, not, you know? So whenever anyone will say anything in front of me, I should act like, yeah, I'm into girls, not into boys. What is it like to be a gay man living in Iraq? What is your life like? Double life. With some people, you should act like you're a straight person who's into girls. and different group of people you will act like yeah I'm gay and they know about you and they will accept you no matter what yeah but sometimes uh, you really need to be fake a little bit but fake just for your protection so you can protect yourself otherwise if anyone know here about your sexual orientation it will be really dangerous on your life like sometimes when I will have a flashback from the past and I would like cry a little bit, let me say, 
they will say like, oh yeah, I understand you really well. No, you don't understand me. No one will understand if they didn't experience that same, you know, the same situation you've been through. No one will understand. They may have a picture, they may have a view or something. They may feel you, but they will never understand what you've been through. No one will. The stories are hard to hear. The battle to find a job, the discrimination at work, the sexual assaults, and the stories in the local media that equate being gay with sex work, the beatings and the killings, always living that double life, frightened about what risks the next moment might bring. Being gay, transgender, non-binary, anything other than straight is difficult and dangerous when you live in Kurdistan and Iraq. The community want you to know their struggles and their hopes too, that in the future they can live and love the same as everyone else.